Okay, so our next speaker is uh, Hong Wei Yu. Please. Microphone. Okay. <coughs> oh, you invited me to this. Wait. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, first, I'd like to thank organizers for inviting me to this wonderful NCTS annual meeting and for the uh, hospitality. Uh, my talk today is based upon two of my recent works. Uh, one is published, the other just came out yesterday morning uh, with my collaborators Chen Jie and Pu Xun who are sitting in the audience and who have done most of the calculations. So my job is to present my, our work to you and it is their responsibility to, to, to answer any questions you may have. Okay? So, this is the outline of my talk. I will start by telling you my motivation, and then I will move on to amplify the curvature of elevations in inflation with gravitational enhanced friction, followed by abundance of primordial black hole dark matter and scalar induced gravitational waves. Then I will end my talk by giving you a summary of, of our results. So, the motivation. The uh, detection of gravitational waves by LIGO and Virgo in the combination of uh, decades long quest confirms directly a prediction of Einstein based upon his uh, classical theory of relativity. And so far, uh, <coughs> ten, uh, gravitational waves from 10 binary black hole merger and one neutron star merger have been detected. And, uh, <coughs> The masses are, are well around 30 solar masses. Okay, so the question is, what is the origin of this black hole detected by uh, LIGO and Virgo? And uh, the black holes can be formed from the death of uh, massive stars, and they can also be formed in the very universe, as suggested by Hawking first which are so-called primordial black holes. The, the black hole from uh, stellar evolution uh, may not be as heavy as uh, 30 solar masses, according to the usual uh, theory of uh, stellar evolution. So it is very possible that black holes detected by LIGO may originate from primordial black holes. And there are some limits on the primordial black hole abundance for LIGO and uh, it was shown by Sasaki et al. that the event rates falls in the LIGO range if the abundance of, of the primordial black hole is uh, 10 to minus 3. The, black hole, the primordial black hole can not only can explain the LIGO uh, detection but can also be used to explain other astronomical and cosmological uh, phenomena. For example, uh, the, <coughs> the Earth's mass uh, primordial black holes comprising 1% of the total dark matter can explain six ultra short time scale micro lensing effects, uh, events in the optical. A uh, gravitational lens experiment. Here, the, the, the shaded region is the 95 uh, confidence level log region of PVH abundance, obtained by assuming that six ultra short time scale micro lensing effects in the OG LE data are due to black holes. And the black hole can also be a candidate of dark matter. So this is a, a map of the components of our, of our universe. The black hole comp comprises 20% uh, of the uh, dark matter. So, uh, sorry, uh, of, yes, uh, dark matter com uh, comprises 20% uh, of, the, of the matter content of the universe. And uh, so far, no signal has been detected in all dark matter 
experiments. So, uh, primordial black holes remain, still remain a candidate of dark matter. So, there are also uh, constraints on the abundance of black hole, uh, primordial black hole dark matter. Uh, previously, it was thought that uh, the black holes, uh, primordial black holes in this range are constrained by partitional femtolandial gamma ray bursts, and this range constrained by micro lending observation with several H HC. But, but uh, it was point, recently pointed out that uh, the finiteness of luminosity source size and the wave property of photons significantly reduce the lensing efficiency. So these two windows allow sort to be open. And uh, so in this range, the black hole, the primordial black holes can comprise all the dark matter. So far, so we, we, we have seen that Primordial black holes remain attractive, uh, attractive way to solve astronomical and cosmological puzzles. So the, the other problem is what uh, the primordial black hole come from in the first place, and what, and in another word, what uh, seeds the primordial black hole. And in this regard, the primordial curvature perturbation in inflation can be the seeds. So, uh, so du du during the radiation area, the s if small scales uh, perturbations are large enough, so the gravity of over-condensed regions of can overcome the, the, pressure, uh, sorry, the radiation force. To, uh, to, to class, you form primordial black holes of the horizon entry. And this figure shows constants uh, on the primordial uh, curvature per uh, perturbations. On large scales, the curvature perturbations are constrained to be, uh, the spectrum to be 10 to minus 9. But on the small scales, the constants are significantly weaker uh, can be considered as non-existent. So, uh, the question is how to uh, amplify the, the polymodial black uh, perturbations on small scales. So if you want to generate a sizable amount of polymodial black holes, then the pulse spectrum should be amplified to 10 to minus 2. Okay, so let's, let's check uh, in the standard simple single field information model to see how to amplify the power spectrum. So you can see for in this long row information model, the power spectrum is inversely proportional to the slope, uh, slow row, Hubble slope row parameter. Okay, and the sample. In this case, we can also define we can also define a so-called potential slow row parameter. In this case, these two parameters are equal. So, in order to amplify, you want to make a very small epsilon. The so one way to uh, to to, uh, to to make smaller similar as epsilon is to have uh, a period of ultra slow inflation. So. The natural way, or the simplest, simplest way, is to have an uh, inflection point where you have the de derivative of uh, potential with respect to phi and the double derivative approximately equal to zero. So once uh, the inflator, in, in terms of dynamics, crosses the point, experiences uh, ultra slow inflation, uh, ultra slow region, or corresponding to ultra slow in inflation. So if you look at the Dynamics governing the inflaton, then you can see besides uh, flattening the potential, there is another way that is to increase friction. So in this work, we 
per proposed mechanism of gravitationally in, uh, enhanced friction implemented in a non minimal derivative coupling inflation model. So, this is the basic equation. So, you have a non minimal coupling between gravity and uh, inflation field. And that uh, psi is a function of inflation field. So if uh, with this action you can derive a Friedman equation and equation of motion from the inflator. For the slow row inf inflation, you have these slow row parameters. And uh, for simplicity of calculation, we'll also enclose this condition. So now, with slow row inflation uh, conditions, then you can approximate the Friedman equation and the equation of motion for inflaton by these two equations. And then you'll see the Hubble, Hubble uh, slow roll parameter is related, related to the uh, potential slow roll parameter by this equation. <coughs> so if, if you can uh, increase A, with an, uh, if you have a big A, then epsilon will be, become smaller, and then you get an uh, amplified uh, curvature uh, elevation. So if we, if you assume that if you stop, so if, if A is equal to approximately one, then you 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 have standard inflation. So if you have A, if you have uh, A much greater than one, then you get a much smaller epsilon and uh, amplified um, uh, amplitude. Okay. So if you assume that we start with uh, a approximately approximately equal to one, then it evolves to a region where A is much, uh, very large, much larger than the one, then you will distribute decelerate the inflation and then in turn uh, you will have uh, you will expect a amplified uh, primordial curvature uh, curve elevation so to test this idea so we are uh, we want to check the, the power spectrum of uh, primordial uh, curvature elevation. elevation. So at the time when the co-moving well run back seat horizon, the power spectrum curvature elevation has the form. This one I just showed in the previous slide. The normal model it becomes in this form. Okay. So if you so if uh, if we, if we, if you are uh, construct a set of phi which uh, has large values at uh, small scales, then you will produce amplified power spectrum at different scales. So here we propose we propose uh, the following special form of theta phi to accomplish the goal of amplifying the primordial, uh, primordial curvature elevation with a simple monomial potential which satisfies CMB constant. So the amplified, okay, amplified. So we can test this by carrying out uh, a, de a detailed calculation for a pump example where we choose this model parameters, model parameters. Then you can see the, the inflation, the, the, the inflator stops here so you have uh, then uh, at the standard in inflation. So the, the final value of, of phi will be the same as uh, the final value of phi in standard inflation. And when enters, when the phi goes to phi, phi equals uh, phi c, the the enhanced uh, it, the enhanced uh, condition of friction almost stops the rolling of of uh, the inflaton, then you have a period of ultra slow inflation uh, corresponding to, uh, to uh, approximately about uh, 13 e volts. Uh, so it starts from uh, the default, default in the number to 20 and ends in about 45. So you, you get amplified power spectrum during this, uh, during this, uh, during the, the, the inflaton rolls very slowly at this step. 
So you can now have a enhanced power spectrum, uh, which satisfies the CNV constraint and large scale scales and have uh, peaks in the uh, uh, on the small scales. And this is three uh, different parameters producing uh, three different uh, uh, peaks. We will see this figure later. Also, okay. Now, in order to uh, to use the primordial particles uh, for our purposes, that is derived to, to, to explain uh, the LIGO event, to explain the six ultra short time lenses uh, events, and also uh, the, uh, as a, a kind of dark matter, we need to calculate the abundance of per primordial black or dark matter, which is cons constrained by observations. So, the, the abundance of uh, primordial black holes with mass and uh, logarithmic mass can be estimated using this formula. And here, M is the mass of the form primordial black holes, which is related to the horizon mass at the, at the horizon entrance of perturbations with moving number k. And the gamma is ratio of the module black hole mass to the horizon mass, uh, which indicates the, effic the efficiency of the collapse. And the beta is the reduction rate of the module black holes with mass n, which I'm the assumption that the probability distribution of perturbations is dosing is given by, based on this theory, this formula. And uh, so where sigma squared is related to the power spectrum to the following equation. So we have the the power spectrum already calculated. So we just plug this in and do the calculation and we'll see what uh, comes up. So we have two, uh, three different parameter sets which produces black holes with, uh, with uh, stellar mass and this, uh, uh, yes, this is uh, Standard mass, and then is uh, the mass for macro lensing effect, and then the mass which can uh, which can comprise most of dark energy. I'm oh, sorry, dark matter. Okay. So we see the bounce power spectrum for the case one. So you have a uh, a peak. Uh, bounds, which satisfies the constant the CMB mu distortion, EVN and ETA constants. And the, the, the mass is around 33.5 solar mass. Then for the second set, you see you have uh, a bounds of uh, this value, then you have the, uh, the P uh, the peak mass, which can explain ultra, uh, uh, six ultra short uh, time scale micro density effect uh, events. Third one, uh, this can be used. So, for third one, then you, 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 will, you will see that and you, if you choose a, a, a proper parameter, <coughs> parameter, then you can get this peak, and this, in this case, the the primordial black holes can comprise all the dark matter. Okay, so uh, so a lot of questions how to uh, test the existence of uh, uh, primordial black holes. So if they do exist, so uh, there is one way to do this. Because the curvature perturbations that lead to formation of uh, primordial black holes couple to tensor perturbations at the second order, thus inevitably generate scalar induced gravitational waves in the radiation area. So, in the constant the enhancement of, of uh, scalar perturbative perturbation for significantly, significantly producing uh, primordial black holes will generate relatively large. Uh, scalar induced gravitational waves which provide a new way to 
to test the idea of primordial black holes. Uh, so du during the inflation, the curvature perturbation, the curvature perturbation can be stretched out of the horizon and when and become possible. And after the inflation, this super horizon curvature perturbation will re-enter the horizon. And enhanced curvature perturbation on small scales which enter the horizon early result in large scale curvature perturbation which are uh, 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 which reduce our scalar metric perturbations, and these metric perturbations coupled in the second order to tensor perturbation, uh, thus induce significant gravitational waves. So now the, the the problem is still is to calculate this scalar induced gravitational waves. So in the conformal Newtonian gauge, the return, the metric can be written as this. And here, phi is first order scalar perturbation. Hij is the second order transverse tracery tensor perturbation. Now, so in the second order, the scalar perturbation couples to the tensor perturbation. So the, the equation for second order HIJ is given by this one, and, and the, and the uh, scalar perturbation sources the gravitational wave. And the source term has this form. So now we are in a position to calculate the spark density spectrum of uh, gravitational waves. So this is the formula. And if you, we will have this power spectrum already calculated, so we can just do a calculation to see, uh, to check the power spectrum of uh, scalar induced traditional waves. So these are the, the numbers you need in this uh, calculation. So we park our, our results and in this formula uh, through our analytical calculations. We also we have also done numerical uh, calculations. We found the power spectrum can be expressed approximately in the uh, infrared and ultra wide region in this power form, where the uh, the power is given by these two formulas, okay, these two powers. So if we uh, compare for take the Earth mass primordial black holes as an example. And we compare the analytical results with the numerical results. You, you see they are largely consistent. Here, and the check, they are. Here, the the blue line is numerical result, and red dashed lines represent the analytical analytical results. So you see they are largely fit. And here is the density spectrum and also density power spectrum, uh, density uh, spectrum of curvature perturbation and also the, the scaling of in scalar induced gravitational waves as a function of k. So you can, from this figure, you can see there is a evolution between the, the slope of the power spectrum of density uh, of uh, curvature perturbation and also the power spectrum. Uh, or the scaling of induced gravitational waves. So I will sh show on the next slide. So in the outer wide region, you have NGW approximately equal to NS. And then in the infrared region, the density spectrum of, of scalar induced gravitational waves has no dependent slope. Okay, so this is just an uh, uh, example. You can see the produced, the scale induced, scale induced uh, traditional waves in, in the in the infrared region 
can be de detected by SKA, and uh, in the ultra wide region, it's in the detection range of LISA. This, uh, this result, the uh, it, source report in the, in the, in the minus uh, came, came out uh, yesterday, and there are several other calculations which uh, I'm not going to show you. So I guess uh, it's time to, to summarize. I will try to uh, save some uh, time for, for the break. Okay, <laughs> okay so uh, in conclusion, we propose a mechanism of traditionally enhancing culture motivations in a non-minimal coupling uh, non-minimal derivative coupling infl inflation model. So the term cost spectrum character elevation has a large enough peak on small scales and satisfies the current co observational constant on the large scales. And the cost spectrum luminosity of the peak can be well approximated by power law of the moving number. We, by choosing different parameter sets, we can easily obtain soft mass spectrum of the module black holes on a run specific max such as this three, which can explain micro events, the ultra short time scale micro lensing e e events in OTL in data and the most of dark matter respectively. And the, the, the GW single produced by scalar perturbation can be detected by SKA and NISO and the, the law dependent of of the uh, of the uh, scale induced by the waves in the infrared region is confirmed, while in the ultraviolet region, the power of scaling is obtained. Okay, thank you. Okay, any questions? Yeah, uh, there's uh, recently there have been several papers uh, claiming that the uh, of this way induced by second order uh, gauge dependent and you, you, you seen you told me gauge what is your comment on that? Yeah this is a just paper came came yesterday or something? I I guess we have to check this. Do you, do you guys have any comments? About the, the gauge de dependence of uh rational waves. We have we have a you, you mean we are, we, are, we are performing calculations in Newtonian gauge, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're asking whether this calculation is a case dependent. Okay. So it's out of the case dependent. Yeah. So uh, my, calculator, my collaborator says that uh, the, the calculation is uh, gauge independent. <laughs> hey, any more questions? You emphasize about the um, radiates and dominate, but uh, for the uh, premium uh, black hole. But now we know that the vacuum must be dominate, so sky must be more. So how? What happened? I don't know. So I, I don't quite get get to uh, the, the, the question. Because you consider for the do radiates and dominate for the pre premium black hole. What? Yes, okay. right, but now the uh, uh, PDS, PDS. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, but now the universe must be the vacuum dominate, so the different compared to the, the, the for the beginning, the beginning of the universe. Because the, the, you can see the for the P, um, PDS, so the for the beginning of the universe. But now it must be, it, it must be different. Oh, okay. Sorry, I, I don't quite understand it somewhat. Well, so maybe Sorry, I, I don't quite understand the English. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe we can discuss it yeah. during the break, okay? Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. So, if no more questions, I thank all the speakers for this session again. Okay, thank you. So, we have a break and come back uh, to.